this is hopefully a short interlude. I don't have a, a set of slide decks and, or presentations to make. I just wanted to uh, put forth some stuff that has occurred to us uh, lately. Uh, maybe spend 10 minutes, take four or five minutes of questions, and then get uh, a far more interesting panel after me to come and chat about uh, real time. I came here with a premise, and my premise is uh, somewhat uh, incendiary to a few of us. And the premise basically says winners have product strategy, while losers have marketing or social strategy. What do we mean by that? Uh, in terms of background, I started out uh, working in advertising or before that in sales in 1984, so it's been about 30 odd years. And about 20, 30 years ago, if you looked at various uh, sectors of industry, or even if you look at large traditional sectors today, if you look at the car business, uh, Toyota has 21% global market share, Volkswagen Group has 20% market share, GM has 18 and then Ford and Honda and so on and so forth. You look at pharma, it's again similar, 20, 18, 16, 14, 12. You look at many sectors of industry, that's how market shares roll out. And in any of these sectors, like there was a gentleman from Lupin, even if you're a number 10 company in India, you're likely to be worth hundreds of crores of rupees. If you're a number 10 company in a sector worldwide, in one of these traditional sectors, you're likely on to be on Forbes' uh, billionaires list. And that's true of a lot of sectors, and you can run a really successful number 10 number 15 company in a sector, and be a very comfortable person. But fast forward to the kind of businesses that have really started coming up in the last five, seven years. Instead of cars, come to electric cars. In the luxury electric car business, uh, one brand has 100% market share, a 98% market share, that's Tesla. BMW is 0.6% in that market. If you go from encyclopedias to search engines, Google has 90 plus percent global market share, while Microsoft's Bing has a 4% market share. This is supposed to be an era of greater competition, but <clears throat> essentially what you're seeing is actually it's leading in a very strange way to greater dominance. You look at the energy drinks market. Red Bull has a 44% market share, while Coke and Pepsi together have 11% market share. And you take industry after industry, you take social networking. Facebook has 80 plus, plus percent market share. I don't even know who's number two. You take microblogging, and Perry was here. Twitter has 100% market share. There is no number two. You take marketplaces globally, there's eBay and there's no number two. You take video platforms online, there's YouTube, and I challenge you to name the number two. You take e -com globally, and Amazon is eight times bigger than anybody else. So we're essentially moving increasingly, whether it's offline or whether it's online, from an age where you could have a successful run as a number 10 company to an age where even if you're number three, you don't matter. Who's the number three in online video? Who knows and who cares? Who's the number three in social networking? Who knows and who cares? Who's the number three in Twitter, in microblogging? Nobody. <clears throat> Who's the number three in email? Who knows and who cares? Right? And what's really interesting, so, I mean, one of the really interesting things is that the world, in terms of broad business strokes, is moving to a world of greater dominance for the leaders, where the big become bigger and bigger, and the, you know, small become, in some cases, smaller and smaller. Into this world, let's see what are the <coughs> common or defining characteristics of these, these guys that we talked about. Or even take Zara in women's fashion, $21 billion in, mark, in, in revenues, more than 10 times larger <coughs> than Calvin Klein or anybody else. One of the really interesting things about all these brands I've named, whether they're offline brands like Zara or Red Bull or whatever, or online brands like all the ones that we've named, whether it's uh, Facebook, Google, Twitter. One of the really interesting things about all these brands is they don't advertise. And that's really what's really interesting. When have you ever seen a Zara ad? Zara has grown to $21 billion in sales without ever re releasing an ad. Hmm? You never see Zara in the fashion magazines. Where do you see anything from Red Bull? Red Bull doesn't advertise, it markets. Where have you seen, ever seen Google advertise or, or Twitter advertise, or Facebook advertise. So one of the really interesting characteristics of this new generation that we're in, of companies that get leadership, is they've figured out they don't spend on advertising to get there. Right? So this is really unique. What does it come from? So what does this leadership come from? This leadership, in every single case, 
comes from extraordinary word of mouth. You heard of Zara, you never saw an ad. Apple did that till iPhone 4. And we'll talk about that again. So this extraordinary word of mouth that we're talking about has led to extraordinary dominance and huge profitability for each of these companies. And how do you create this extraordinary word of mouth? You create it by building a product, by building an offering that is so unique, that is so remarkworthy, that is so delight offering that your consumers and other stakeholders in the, in the industry talk about it. Somebody told you about Zara, she wasn't paid to tell you. Somebody told you to get onto WhatsApp, you must be on WhatsApp. He wasn't paid to tell you. Somebody told you to get a Gmail account, he wasn't paid to tell you. Somehow, each of these brands have managed to capture extraordinary consumer evangelism for free. And increasingly, when your marketing or your advertising budget is zero, uh, and a great example of that is WhatsApp that got sold for $21 billion and made that famous statement saying, well, what do you mean marketing budget? I don't even have a marketing person in the company. We have no marketer in the company. The company is a consumer product, which you know, reaches 600 million people around the world and got bought for $20 billion. To put that in perspective, you know, $20 billion is, you know, the Tata Group in India has a market cap of $80 billion. So the value of WhatsApp is one-fourth of the entire Tata Group of companies worldwide. So now it comes down to this entire point saying, if you're how they fight, and we've seen that in our own industry companies. One of my hats I wear is I, I invest in startups. Redbus grew to 850 crores in revenue, and we sold the company before we ever advertised. And the advertising was also a bit of a giveaway because my CEO, Funny, came and said, Mahesh, you never let us advertise. Now, at least company, the big app, let's spend. So we spent six odd crores in a month. And I asked him what happened later, he said, Kushniwa. Even after spending six crores in a month, right? Carval is another case in point. They grew to 65 crores in revenues, which is larger than the combined revenues of most other car magazines in India. And they advertised for some kicks last month. Uh, they didn't need to. They did that more to, for a particular strategic objective, but not to really grow the product. So increasingly, we believe more and more so that the winners in the sector, and it's more and more important to be that winner because if you're not number one, if you're not number two, you don't matter. So how do you get to be that number one? And I think that's really what's interesting. You find that niche where you can play. You don't try to be the master of 25 niches. And in that niche, you figure out what is it you can do with your product and what is it you can do with your offering to get extraordinary extraordinary positive word of mouth happening for you. Because if you don't do that, you will need to spend money. It's been a favorite adage that I keep getting beaten up for, but one of my favorite sayings is really that your, your marketing IQ is inversely proportional to your marketing budget. With every year in the market, I increasingly see it so. The more you can outthink and create a product offering that can grow, and we are in a world where today we have 280 million internet connections in India. According to the census, we still have only about 112 million TV sets. We have 2.5 billion internet connections around the world. There is already an environment out there which is ready to spread your message and take it across. The question is, do you really have a message worth taking across? And those messages that get taken across can be anything from Charlie bit my finger, all right? Or in the case of the gentleman from the pharmaceutical world, there was, a huge, there was a bunch of smart people who got together and said, we want to raise a huge amount of awareness about this very mi minor disease called ALS. And they did the ice bucket challenge, which went around the world, got heads of state and Obama and various other people involved for free, and raised $75 million in the first four weeks on a zero ad spend. There is a different way. I grew up in a world, I come from the traditional advertising world, I grew up in a world where you were told pretty much that you have to spend to win. Thankfully for entrepreneurs, thankfully especially for people in the digital world, thank, when every business today is in the digital world, whether it's Red, Red Bus or Red Bull, you are in the digital world. There is a different way. If you can't outspend, you actually now can outsmart. These are two valid ways. So you can figure out, do you want to win this business by having a 500 crore budget or a 5,000 crore budget? Or do you want to fill this business by maybe spending another five crores or 50 lakhs, five rupees, or whatever it takes on building a better product, on building a product that already has this idea of delighting consumers and being able to travel through word of mouth to spread itself. 
it's a short time. I've, I think I've done with my 10 minutes. I'll take a few minutes of questions before I call the witness. Are you guys awake? Any questions? Anything I can answer? Questions? Thoughts? Barry, do you agree? Disagree? Barry agrees. Your question, ma'am. Hi, I'm Sneha Parikh from Tata Motors. Um, the point that you made on um, having a great product that sells by itself, if we do not um, have enough ma marketing budget or if we do not want to spend that much, uh, I think that it probably works for a, thing, uh, a product that is there in the market or an extension or even something that is known to people. Can, but can if I, you're can, bringing Can I interrupt you, ma'am? One second. Can I say something that will make me very unpopular with you? Can I say something that will make me very unpopular with you? You have an extraordinary product in the Tata Nano. You screwed it up because you advertised it and because you marketed it. I swear to you, if you did nothing, you would triple the sales of that product. You so screwed it up with bad positioning, bad advertising, you, you just had to put that product in the showroom, it would have been picked up. I'm sorry, this is, I truly believe that I drive a Nano, right? I love the car and I bought it in spite of everything you did. I'm sorry, I, 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 I genuinely mean that. I mean, that's one of the best products any car company has built anywhere in the world. My God, what did you do with that? I'm sorry, I'm not going to be very popular with you. No, no, that's fine. Sorry, uh, so, for a product like Nano, which was, you know, the first in its segment or first in its class, uh, it was very popular and discussed in the media even before it got launched. So that had its own story. But if you have a new brand in a competitive ma uh, market, where there are already say five, six players there with a similar offering, not completely same. You have some differentiators. Still, you need to reach out and talk, so let me explain talk. your you're, point. You're right. You're right. And in fact, I, I read a really influential piece by this guy called Peter Thiel. And he talks about the fact that everybody says competition is good. But actually, competition is a horrible thing. Because what happens, and you've seen that in the Indian e-commerce industry is a great, great example of that. When you have people who compete, in any sector where there's competition, the profits go out of the sector. Because you spend, I spend. He spends, they spend. You discount, he discounts. She discounts, they discount. Finally, at the end, in that entire sector, there's no profit left. So why would you ever want to launch a car in a competitive segment? Why wouldn't you try to do something in a monopoly segment? This is the big successful businesses that we talk about. Google is a monopoly. Twitter is a monopoly. Facebook is a monopoly. Red Bull is kind of a near monopoly. Zara is a monopoly. Why don't you build? A product aiming for a monopoly. That's my point exactly. A great product strategy will save you the trouble of trying to spend money to market a MeToo product. The problem is you deliberately set out to build a MeToo product. You deliberately set out to build a commodity car. Oh, we need an A-class sedan. Oh, we need a B-class sedan. Oh, we need a C-class sedan. Oh, we need a D-class sedan. Who says you do that? You don't. Why don't you build something as innovative as a Nano every time? And you'll find that you don't need to sell that. It'll sell by itself. A great example is the Tesla. It's won every single award in the world, the best car in the world. They're out there. They're building $2 billion battery, fa uh, battery factories. They have 100% market share in their segment, 100% market share in automotives. So it really, you're actually emphasizing my point, which is what my point is, why did you choose to be in a segment where you can't win? Why would you do that? Unless you have a great need for spending money to say, yes, I have a 500 crore budget. I'm better than that person who has a 400 crore budget. I actually believe the opposite. If somebody can beat you with a 50 crore budget, that person is smarter than somebody with a 500 crore budget. I've really lost all points with you, right? You won't even talk to me again. No, no, no. You've answered it. Thanks, man. More questions? Sir, you're the gentleman from Lupin, right? Yeah. You also hate me already? No, not okay. at all. Okay. But my question is, what you talked about is definitely very much relevant to many of the other industries. Now talk about the pharmaceuticals or the healthcare. I just right? did. No, so okay. I'm perfectly all right with that. But my question is that in a country where most of the companies are uh, working with generics, okay, now uh, you mean to say that one has to think of a specific medicine for a specific disease which nobody else can make it? Not and necessarily, then how, sir. how you would be reaching to... Not necessarily, uh, sir. Yeah, then when I say product, I don't just mean product. I mean your entire brand offering. Uh -huh. I mean, if there are five companies making a generic product... I mean, an energy drink is an energy drink. All those energy drinks have the same. They have glucose and they have taurine, they have, you know, thymine. Every, all of them are the same. Yet, why do you pick a Red Bull 
you know, at 95 rupees for a 200 ml can, or any other drink which is 20 rupees for a 300 ml can. Even Coke is 20 rupees for a 330 ml can. Why do you pick a Red Bull at 95 rupees? Because you have built something out there with extraordinary word of mouth and extraordinary consumer delight. So there is something to be found. If it's a set of generics, so you have the issue, Abbott has the issue, Very pe many, many people are getting to generics. But even in generics, you can create a brand. What does Lupin mean? The problem is if you haven't made Lupin mean anything special, you will always be in the competitive set. How can you pull yourself out of the competitive set and into a monopoly set? That effort is something you can take. It can be taken. It means you have to stop thinking as, okay, in that category I'm fighting Abbott. In that category I'm fighting Sanofi. In that category I'm fighting Aventus. In that category I'm fighting Pfizer. But say, okay, fine, how do I take this somewhere else and make my brand loop in to mean something really special that nobody else... And we can figure out what it is. It's not difficult. But if you think from the point of view that I want to create a monopoly instead of I want to be, a, be one of the competition, I think you can really do well. Uh, Mahesh, Hi. sir, uh, Omesh with uh, Aryan Superstructures Limited. Uh, I really agree with you on the product strategy. It is if the product strategy is absolutely correct, you are going to win. So, so be it example, we are talking about affordable luxury. Mm -hmm. Like we are into the real estate business, so we have chosen affordable luxury. You know, so when we have created a gated community with all the amenities and yet affordable price right from 20 lakhs onwards, then people are bound to buy. I mean, last three years, what we have seen recession. In the real estate segment, we have been doing fell. You know, well, it's fell true. Fell. I mean, we've seen it again. We work with a very large yeah. real estate market in the country. Today, in terms of conversion rates on real estate from online, we're getting 8.5 percent. It's ridiculous. In my life, in the last 11 years, I haven't seen conversion rates that happen in real estate, and we're apparently in a down market in real estate. Right? We're seeing extraordinary. So, if you get the message right, if you get the product right, you're going to have the sales happen, and it's, got, it's not going to require tons and tons of advertising money, because to me, like I keep saying. You can outthink. Why do you need to outspend? Yeah, I think we're at a 15-minute mark. So yeah. th just sure, one sure. thing. La sure. So what are your three takeaways? You know, or three um, thought process making people think about on the product so first, strategy. My first point is, why do you want to compete? Why not go and create a monopoly? That's the first point. There's no honor in competing because in a competition everybody loses. What's the point of having a fight when everybody is going to die at the end of the fight? There's no point in being a last man standing. Because you're going to be standing and hurt while somebody else walks away with the actual price. So first, go for a monopoly. Don't go for a competition. Second, figure out what it is you can do to create an offering that is extraordinarily remarkable. worthy that you really believe that some random person will tell somebody else on local train, first, you must check that out. What is it you need to do to make that happen? Right? In some cases, for example, I keep laughing at my friend Alok, uh, who went and renamed uh, Vadala as North Cuff Parade. Right? But even unwittingly, what happens is people laugh about it, saying, Are yaar, wo north, wo the cuff parade north, wo actually wada there. Right? So at least somebody has now figured out because they named the na changed the name of the locality. I think at one point, Alec Padamsi tried to rename Lower Parade as Upper Verley and failed. But he wasn't as smart as Loda today. So the second thing is, how, how do you find something that is remarkable? The third thing, and this is really interesting, is you can do this for a period of time, but somebody will catch up. So how can you make sure that you're always doing something that is always remarkable? Right? Just because you get one search engine right doesn't mean that you're going to be Google forever. You've got to get the, the self-driving cars right. You've got to get maps right. You've got to get mail right. So keep doing stuff. And you will fail. You'll have a Google Plus that will fail. You'll have a Google something else that will fail. Be open to failing. Right? But in each of these cases, even that company with $60 billion in revenues has a zero ad spend. It's all consumer product. Right? Those are, if anything, those three takeaways I can offer you. Right? Thanks. Ma'am, one last question. Hi. Um, so I rightly agree that when we say that we have to build on product strategy, so today I say I, I Googled it in spite of saying that I searched it. So that's the power of a brand and a word of mouth. But I disagree. Uh, we have 37,000 brands, someone's rightly said, that present in India. And nobody can, I, I'm sure that 100 brands can play on Monopoly. However, if there is an existing market, for example, if I talk about telecom, be it Idea, Airtel, or uh, Vodafone. So both of, uh, three of them are giving the same uh, kind of a product line. Three of them are giving the same solution, same customer services. Everybody tries to build it on that I am number one. Same goes with the e-commerce, be it Snapdeal, Amazon, or Flipkart, that we are the price marketers. So they are playing on price. So 
everyone cannot uh, play in a monopoly market so we, what we have been dealing is 37000 brands so in so, such in spite in, in this kind of a scenario we need to have an advertising budgets so that's what we see the pepsi cola that, war or that's that's, kind of a, thing. that's a loser's justification for spending money that's all right i don't have no, a problem okay, if you want to justify no, 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 but, but here's a point I'm, i'm happy to have a fight with you but let's wait for example for the 4g thing to roll out and okay. i i promise you that if it works if 4g works in india the lands geo will not need to advertise it will wipe out everybody else if it works if it doesn't work it's a different issue i am agreeing with you on that fact that product is the thing i am talking so about what about the existing market why do you care about that what is this market do you are you happy being one of those 37000 brands that will never differentiate itself sure you can what if you As have a, a company, choice if i let's say let's say i am a vodafone and i don't advertise tomorrow tomorrow airtel and idea will take over the leap i had that's, to ma'am that's because you are not innovating if you are able to innovate and so create a better innovation has been copied by the competition the next other day so what that's life it's not easy that's nobody ever told you that's why there we need to advertise no you don't brand okay, after brand around the world no problem otherwise the discussion will go longer <laughs> the, the bigger the loser the more you spend no <laughs> all right no issues thank you very much i succeeded in pissing off a lot of you